Welcome to Twisted Liquid RC Boats. Okay, guys. I think we got a flat level floor to work with. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to Twisted Liquid RC Boats and our continuation in our Zip Kits SLR Missile Thunderbolt build. While we were off camera, we let our bottom floor cure, the epoxy cure on our bottom floor, and we released it from our working fixture. We have it stood up in the background, kept taped together for safety, out of the way. I gotta say, guys, once again, I'm happy with the way it came out. It's all one solid piece. It's all flat and level when you lay it on the MDF. The warpage came out of it. It's exactly like I want it. While you guys were off camera, I decided to do one simple step that I'm not going to show you. And that's basically just drill some holes in my MDF put some screws in it and attach my two MDF pieces together to make one solid piece. I countersunk my screws down into the MDF guys only for the reason that if I want to slide my square or my level across the surface the screw heads are not in my way. So we have a solid working surface to put our jig that came in the kit with the boat onto now, attach it to it, and we have great surface to work with to build a level square boat. This is critical guys because we want to make this boat run true in water, we want it to be straight in a straight line, we want it to be good in the turns with the turn fin attached to it. We want to build a true square good running boat. So emphasizing working on a flat level surface Getting our jig flat and level on that surface is important. As you can see, same thing as with our floor, 1 8 plywood. We have some slight warpage in it, nothing serious, but we have to get it out so that we got a nice level surface to work with. Staple gun to attach it to the MDF with. I put two staples in the center, started right there, stapling. In order to eliminate the warpage, I'm slowly going to staple out while I hold the wood down with my level. So, having said that, let's get some staples in this. And if we've got to tap them in a little more afterwards, we'll do so to get the heads flush down with the wood so that if we have to work with anything, it's not obstructing us in our way. So I'm simply going to push it along like so. And about every four inches, I'm going to keep my weight down on the jig. And I'm just going to attach another staple. Pulling the jig down to the MDF as I'm doing it. This should eliminate the warpage that we have in this piece. Try and avoid your staples in your slot area, guys. Just common sense. All we're concentrating on doing is getting our jig flat to our surface. My level perfect on my bubble. Actually go back a little bit.
Okay, guys. We have our jig held down to our MDF. Our staples are still sticking up a little bit, so I'm probably just going to tap them down into the wood with a hammer. But the biggest key is we are perfectly level wherever we look. And that's exactly what we want here. We have a good level surface to build our boat on. All right, guys biggest key points to your jig fixture. Make sure it's approximately about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half thick, we'll say. The thicker the surface, the more true, level, and flat it's going to be. Make sure you attach it good. I'm sure all you guys know how to use a power drill. I'm sure you guys all know how to use a Phillips screwdriver. And when you put the jig that comes in the kit. Make sure the letter F is facing forward. This is forward. This is our bow. This is our transom. This is our left building side right at the moment. This is our right building side. But we are building this boat, believe it or not, upside down. And then when we finally do release it from this jig and flip it over, we'll be building it right side up. But right now what you are looking at is a jig that's going to take all the bulkheads and make us build this boat upside down. Once we get all of the bottom of the boat built, that's when we'll finally release it and flip it over. So make sure you orientate the letter F like you would in the standard English alphabet. Make sure that you have these two holes right here on the left hand side of your jig. The reason being for the two holes on the left hand side of the jig is all of the bulkheads have two holes also. Every single one of them. And we're going to lay all these in place so that they correspond. It makes it simple for assembly and make sure that you don't put no bulkheads in in the wrong location and every all of your holes will be on your left hand side as you are building the boat in your bulkheads. The six pieces in the bulkheads are all right here. They all fit into every slot you see here in the jig. We also have two side pieces. We have a left piece which has our exhaust vents cut in it and we have a right piece. And we also have our two engine rails, which we laminated together earlier in a previous episode. By the way, I can't believe, guys, it's episode six already. Wow, amazing. And thanks for the channel support. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying the build. Anyways, back to what we were doing. We got to get all these ten pieces put together. And when we get these 10 pieces put together in this frame, in this jig, we got our basic frame built. So this is where it gets fun in our boat building expedition. Now, before we glue anything today, before we do anything, get really out there, I want to do what I'm going to call a dry fit. And what I mean by a dry fit is I'm going to put all the pieces together in the slots, all the bulkheads, I'm going to lay the sides in piece. I'm going to lay the engine rails in place, and I want to see if I can get all of this to fit together really nice, probably no more than just a couple pieces of tape holding it on the transom, and we can see if we can just get a dry fit, how everything looks, and then we can go in and put everything together with some glues and some epoxies. So, having said that, all the bulkheads have BH and a number on them. Forward, back, left, right building. So, doing it in orientation, keep your dots with your dots on your jig, and simply place your bulkhead in the slots, just like so. Bulkhead number five. Bulkhead number four.
This is big bulkhead number three that we laminated together earlier in a previous episode. This is bulkhead number two. And this is bulkhead number one. Everything sat in place, no problem. They're all leaned back a bit. It's no big deal. Let's take our two side pieces. Now, because we're building this boat upside down, left is right and right is left. It's kind of weird, ain't it? But we got to keep that in our mind as we're doing our assembly of this boat. And what I mean by that is it's opposite on the jig. The boat is upside down now. So this side over here is your right side while you're working. But it is actually the left hand side of the boat. Now I'm just curious how everything is going to slide together. How everything is going to fit together. Is it going to be flush? Is it going to be level? Is everything just going to kind of sit there nice and good? Because if it do, and you know I was picky on my slots when I was doing my laminating. Well, this was my main reason why. I wanted to make sure I could get everything that had to be assembled interlocked again. That guy fell on us, but that's no big deal. And just take our time here. It's just a dry fit, guys. Just to make sure on the steps we have to do and how everything's initially going to fit in the kit. It's just a dry fit. spring in our wood. So let's just grab a little bit of tape here. Let's see if we can hold this basic frame together. Just a couple simple pieces of tape. Have a quick look and see what we got. If I can hold this just down the transom sitting in the slots for now, just for a dry fit. And make sure I'm good on everything. And eye up the work that I have to do coming up. Don't be afraid to size this up, guys. I'm going to tell you now while I'm working here on camera. I'm in no rush to build this boat. I would rather take my time now figure out every step I gotta do, get all my assembly procedure right, and I'd rather build a nice boat one time than have to redo this later on. So I don't mind test fitting parts first before I do some initial gluing of any kind just to make sure I'm doing it correctly. And this is something that I would advise to anybody who's doing this for the first time like myself too. Because it'll make you realize that you got to have certain things right in order for certain things to work later on. All these bulkheads have to be a flush fit when we get all this glue together or the floor won't fit properly. And I can see right now now we got to make things work to do it. Now guys, that's just an initial dry fit in a couple minutes, just to see what we got to do. Here's my plan. I'm going to take all this apart. Get some good Bob Smith Industries CA glue there. 
We're going to use our square and we're going to slowly start from the rear working our way forward and we're going to square up each bulkhead and we're going to lightly tack it in with a little bit of CA glue just to hold it at a really good 90 for starting. I'm going to do it on both legs I'll call it of the bulkhead. I'm going to make sure it's square and just attack a CA glue. Once I know I got all my bulkheads perfectly at a 90, coming off of my jig, going straight up. Then I'm going to come in, put my side pieces in place, tack them also in certain parts, certain places, and then I'm going to mix up my epoxy and go in and start getting everything good on the bulkheads and on all of the joints. I'd like to make it critically known that we have to keep everything 90 degrees. I want to keep everything at a 90. I want a 90 right here from a side to a bulkhead. I want a 90 right here from the jig to a side. I want a 90 right here from the jig to the transom and each bulkhead as we come up right up through the boat. I want to keep everything square and everything perfect as I'm building this. And guys, this is the biggest key with a three-point hydroplane like this. That's why I was so picky on doing the floor. I wanted to try and make it as perfect a running surface in the water as I could. And the flatter I built that floor, the better. You can see the work we got to do to frame our boat up. I hope this explains the jig good enough. I hope this explains dry fitting good enough. I think it's time that we CA glue in our bulkheads epoxy them in and then we see a glue lightly in certain places our two sides and we epoxy them in also this is where it gets fun because we're starting to really see something and before I forget so you guys can see we have our two engine rails sitting here also that we laminated together earlier in a previous episode these guys can only go in one way and if you want to dry fit them also, and see how they're going to fit after your work, you can lightly lay them in place right there, and check that also. And I'm liking the fit on everything, because the rails are down flush with the bulkhead, no problem at all. All the bulkheads are flush right here, any point of contact where they meet. This just needs to be glued and held, and it will be flush. Everything's fitting in the slots on the back three bulkheads. So that's a good initial dry fit to our frame. Okay, guys. I was going to take my time and start to glue my bulkheads in. It is important that when you glue your bulkheads into the boat, you push them all the way down into the slots in the jig so you get a good fitment with all your bulkheads. But as I was doing this, in my dry fit, I noticed that bulkhead number three was dropped down approximately an eighth of an inch right here on the side where the bottom would mount on the boat. And it was dropped down about an eighth of an inch right here on the side where the deck would fit the boat. If I take a close look at the rest of the bulkheads as they sit flush in their slots in the jig, everything lines up perfectly with all the other parts that they interlock with. It's only bulkhead number three that is dropped down slightly. This would make for a bad deck fitment right here, and this would make for a really, really bad floor fitment right here later on down the road as we go to build our boat. What I have to do is I have to lift this bulkhead up just slightly when I go to glue it in and I have to bring it flush with the top edge and flush with the bottom edge of my side in order to get a proper fitment for my other parts later on. So here's my cure to this problem that I've ran into. I keep some craft sticks lying around. I cut them up and I simply use them for stir sticks. They're cheap. Get them at the dollar store. Bags of them. So if I take a craft stick and I run it across the top of the bulkhead, it's about the exact same thickness of the gap I gotta take up. 
So what I done was, I cut two little pieces of craft stick down to the exact size of the slot. Just two little tiny pieces of wood. And I'm gonna place them in that slot right there. And then I'm gonna put the bulkhead in so it takes up the gap and it lifts my bulkhead up approximately an eighth of an inch and gives me a perfect flush fit for my floor later on and a perfect flush fit for my deck later on. You can see how much the bulkhead drops. You can even hear it when I release my thumb. So guys, this is why we take our time and we do a dry fit of our boat before we just break the glue out and start gluing everything together. This is important and I can't stress it enough. If I'd have just took the glue out later on when I go to build this boat, it'd have been a headache to get a floor and a deck on and I don't want that. I want to build a good boat here. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to use my eyes. I'm going to watch closely for little things like this. And if I run into a problem like this along the way, I'm not going to get upset at all. All I'm going to do is figure out a cure for it. So, as I go to glue in my bulkheads in the next episode, you're going to notice that I'm going to use those little pieces of wood, and I'm going to place them underneath that bulkhead, and I'm just slowly going to lift that up. Just a little bit. And it's going to make my life a lot easier down the road. Once again, guys, can't say thank you enough for all the channel support. Twisted Liquid truly appreciates your support. It's great. Everyone seems to love the build videos. We're going to keep them going. We're going to keep building this boat at a steady pace. I'm in no rush to do it. I'd rather build myself a nice boat once and enjoy it when I get it built. Everybody take care out there and have a great day. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Take care and stay safe.